Well, let's now bring you more on uh, this new variant and uh, what we know so far. We're joined on the program by Dr. James Ayanride, who's a senior research fellow at NIMAR. It's good to have you, uh, Dr. Ayanride. So we have a novel variant of a pretty much novel coronavirus on our hands, and it feels like double jeopardy, really. But in terms of what we know about this, what can you tell us? So um, thank you for having me. So um, first and foremost, I don't think we should panic much um, about the new variant, um, even though it has quite a number of mutations that is scaring, um, <clears throat> scaring us theoretically. But we've not seen, you know, um, increase in cases, you know, ICU cases in some of these countries that they've reported this variant. And uh, even though um, it was reported first in, um, between Botswana and South Africa, this variant is almost everywhere in the world. And um, I don't think we should panic because um, a lot, um, we still have a lot, to, a lot to go about this new variant. Um, whether it escapes um, vaccines um, response, um, we, we all need to have that checked in the lab so that we have adequate data to support um, some of the propositions that we have. But at the moment, I don't think there should be any panic over the new variants that we have. So, I mean, we've had the alpha variant, we've had the, the beta variant, the delta variant, and the rest are now a micro. So I wonder uh, from what point of view you're asking people not to panic. I understand that, I mean, this is your field, but for a lot of people, they might need some more convincing. I mean, they don't have the facts, they don't have the data, they didn't deal with the previous ones anyway. All you just heard, uh, you know, were statements and research outcomes from researchers. So from what point of view uh, do you ask people not to panic such that they can understand where you're coming from? So um, the, the mutations that are scary on this virus are actually very associated with the spike protein and the receptor binding domain. And what this means is that these are the regions that help the virus gain access into the host cells. However, there are some other proteins that could be associated with the virulence of the virus, you know, that can cause disease severity. And we don't have sufficient information to show that mutations on these other proteins, you know, or some other target or some other genes of this virus, you know, would enhance severity of the disease. So there's no point in panicking since we don't have such information. And um, even though we might have not detected the virus in our environment, but because we live in a global community, um, we shouldn't be surprised that we could have the virus here at the moment, while uh, most of our labs are still working in sequencing most of our samples. And um, we also need to give kudos to the South African um, epidemiological um, surveillance team for being able to detect this. So it's not like a, a, you know, like the media hype that we have, that we have a new variant from Africa. Yes, it has quite a number of mut mutations on the spike protein, but we need to know, we need to get more data. We need to see, does it increase severity of the disease? We don't know. We don't have any data to support that. And we are not seeing that at the moment. But scientists are working, you know, and scientists are looking at the sequences in relation to, you know, if um, they can escape, you know, um, vaccine-induced immune response in the lab. So until we begin to get some of this information from the lab, it's very difficult for us to say convincingly that we are in trouble. Yeah, and, and, and for, for all we know, this virus is now in Netherlands, it's, it's in Australia, it's in UK, it's in Hong Kong, it's in Canada, it's in China, Italy, Germany. Belgium, even in Israel, despite the fact that they are locking their borders to foreigners. So, and once it's in one place, forget it. It's almost everywhere. But we don't need to panic at all. Thank you. Right. Uh, and you, you touched on some very important points, and I'll just pick one of them. I mean, you referenced this uh, virus or this new variant being detected in a lot of countries. Canada is one of them. And just before we, uh, you know, we brought you on, we referenced that report from Canada uh, saying that two cases had been detected and they had travel history to Nigeria. So it raises the questions about seroprevalence, uh, questions about our surveillance and arrest. And people would ask, I mean, the NCDC has said so far we have not detected that in Nigeria. But you recall that they say for every 
one case that you detect, there are probably five more or ten more that are undetected. So really, what are the possibilities? Uh, I mean, what does this mean for Nigeria, seeing that there were cases discovered, detected in Canada that had travel history to Nigeria? So what, what, what do you see that meaning for Nigeria? So th that could mean that we have some of these cases, you know, in Nigeria. And at times, it takes a lot of effort, you know, to have some of the sequencing projects, you know, to, to yield results at times. And there could be some other, you know, circulating variants that we might be seeing that, you know, are not very loud or, or we are not, um, you know, that, that are yet to be reported. However, I, um, like I said, it, um, our surveillance system is working. And um, the fact that we've not reported it does not mean it's not here. And even if we report it, my question is always what next? Yes, we found it. So what are we going to do next? What lessons have we learned from what we have seen now? So those are the germane issues, the germane questions we, be look we should be looking at. So now that it's been reported in South Africa, so it's left to other parts of the world. Yes, every other part of the world began to race back into their sequencing surveillance programs and see how they could detect it. Now that we have detected, so we need to ask some other questions. How dangerous, dangerous is this new variant compared to the Delta variant? And of course, we still have the Delta variant still circulating mm. and you know, wrecking its own havoc. So um, the question should be, um, what are we doing you know, in our own space to prevent the spread of SARS-CoV-2? regardless of whether it is Delta, whether it is Omicron, right. or whatever new variant that we have. So we just have to keep up with our standards and the things that we feel that we need to do to ensure mm. that we prevent the spread of this virus. Well, Dr. Like Arundel, just people, yeah. a, a part of me, just one more thing before we wrap up on, on, on this one. So speaking about what to do next, because that's the question a lot of people will ask, one of the possibilities that have been raised is the fact that just maybe, I mean, you said it's theoretical, but in the event, or, I mean, the possibility that this variant is, I mean, the vaccines, the current vaccines we don't have, what if there's a possibility that, I mean, it doesn't work for the variant? Does that mean that a new, you know, vaccine will be developed and administered to people in terms of the possibilities and whether or not there's an end in sight to this new variant? I mean, we're at Omicron, the 15th Greek alphabet. Who knows where we'll be in the next few months? Uh, what, what, what does the future hold on a final note? So um, what the future holds is that we need to be more vigilant. Um, we need to also take proactive steps by preventing the spread, you know, like um, the NCDC guidelines that we've all been talking about, like your, the use of face masks, you know, using your hand sanitizers and the likes. But more importantly, COVID is teaching us a lesson. It's teaching us that we should be prepared because now it's COVID. We don't know what could come up tomorrow. So we need to invest more in research. Uh, we need to invest more in vaccine development. We need to, Africa needs to also wake up in vaccine manufacturing, even though it's a tall order, but we have to get there someday. And um, we just need to keep working, right? And see that we understand what the virus is. And more, more importantly, we should not have accurate information. We should not panic right. you know, over some information that we have out there. So thank you. And that's a great place to anchor. Dr. James Ayoride, Senior Research Fellow at NIMA. It's been a pleasure speaking with you and to hear, I mean, some of this you know, information from you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Bye.